thousand dollars to support local nonprofits. Yeah, this is really cool. Ships at the station picks a new organization to support each month. And I want to go to Kyle, who is over at Arsley Station this morning, telling us who's benefiting this month. And Kyle, this is a nonprofit that we are quite familiar with here on Morning Break. Yeah, absolutely, Tim, and I know you've done uh, several stories uh, uh, talking about uh, the benefits of employability uh, here in our area, and today we're thankful for the fall weather, and I'm also thankful for people who invented the fire pit that is giving us a little bit of uh, warmth this morning, but uh, employability, the beneficiary of tonight's SIPs at the station, uh, and I'm joined by Brendan Ferrara, the uh, CEO and president. Uh, for folks who aren't familiar, we I know Tim's done many stories with you guys, but uh, yeah. give us a kind of a brief overview overview of what employability is. Sure, we're a uh, local nonprofit. We were started in 1950. We work with people with intellectual and developmental disabilities on community integration, job training, and supported employment. Um, we operate not only in Savannah, that's where our, our home base is, but we operate and, and uh, help people in Bullock County, Liberty County, Chatham County, um, and Effing County. And you guys have been doing this for quite some time in the area, too. Correct. Yeah, we were started in 1950 uh, by the Kicklider family as well as a couple of other families. Um, uh, they, there really wasn't anything in the community to help uh, people with intellectual and developmental disabilities at the time, and so they just decided to start it on their own. Let's kind of go through what employability does. I know you've kind of got a three-tier system, so to speak, yeah. of, of, of how you're helping uh, the IDD community. So kind of give us a run-through of that. Sure. The, the, the base level service that we have is called Community Access Group, and the purpose of that is to help people become as independent as possible. So we work with them on developing some independent living skills, self-advocacy skills. Um, people will come in. We have a rec therapy coordinator on staff. We have an art therapy coordinator on staff, so they may be do, doing some on-campus art therapy. They may Maybe doing rec therapy there. We've got a great relationship with the local YMCAs where we may go out and do some physical activities there as well. Um, that program also goes out and volunteers. We volunteer with Meals on Wheels, we volunteer with organizations like PAC um, and a variety of other nonprofits to help them. Um, and then the next level up that we have is our pre-vocational training. That also is services that we have on that uh, uh, facility here in Savannah. Um, there, what we're working with people on, again, is some independent living skills, but also developing the skills people will need to get a job. Um, and then hopefully that transitions into the third that you mentioned, which is called supported employment. Um, we've got over 120 people employed at over 100 employers in all of the, the counties that I had mentioned. Um, how that works is when somebody goes through the program, they've got the skills they need to go out and get a job. We set them up with a job coach. They partner them with uh, an organization. They go on their interview. They get hired by that organization, and we show up on the very first day and train right alongside them. And we show up on the next day, and we show up on the next day. And as people begin to get comfortable, we begin to back away until we get to the point what we call job stability. Um, and then we've stepped back the person's working on their own, but we check in with the employer and we check in with the employee to make sure everything's going well for the lifetime of the job. Twice a month, um, if everything's going great, it's just kind of a real quick check-in. If, if uh, everything's going superb and they're going to develop maybe into some more um, skills or tasks uh, within the organization, we may come back in and train with them. If there's a bump in the road, we can kind of help with that as well. You've been doing this 70 years, uh, employability, not necessarily yeah. yourself, but sure. um, the, the proof of concept of could could people with IDD thrive in this in this situation? You said like, we're well beyond that. We've yeah. moved past that, and now into this opportunity where it's like let's train them and put them in those opportunities and make that happen for them. Yeah, that was something that happened during the pandemic. Um, as you mentioned, a lot of people in Savannah know us as the napkin place, or they they're familiar with the culinary business that we had, or the relationship that we had with Gulfstream and JCB working on some of their electrical housing units. Um, and and that was started in the 1970s because, as you mentioned, a lot of uh, businesses either thought that the barriers or obstacles to hiring people with developmental disabilities were too significant or that maybe two people just couldn't be productive enough. Well, by the time we ran those businesses for, you know, 40, 50 years, businesses started to, to realize that the, there was this huge advantage of hiring people with intellectual disabilities, not only for the productivity that they're going to bring, but for the morale boost. What a lot of employers will find out is that the retention of their own employees, the attendance of their own employees, and the productivity of their own employees, um, or their existing employees, significantly goes up when they hire some of our participants. So during the pandemic, we made a transition. We uh, shut down those businesses and we transitioned into an academic environment and the easiest way to, to kind of 
think about it is it's kind of like the technical college for uh, adults with intellectual disabilities. Uh, awesome opportunity for those folks and uh, for what you guys are doing and great opportunity for you at home to uh, come out. You can support that very simply. Uh, $10 admission to be part of SIPS at the station. They got raffles as well. As she mentioned, uh, Drew Osri said you can get an arm's length for $50. Maybe you get somebody with a really long arm. Uh, maybe you get an extra ticket or two. Um, here at uh, Arsley Station, uh, we're at, at the corner of East Victory and Drayton. You'll probably see a crowd out here on the patio. They got heat lamps, so those will be going a little bit later on today. 5.30 to 7 is when it's all happening this evening. Guys, we'll send it back to you in the studio.